Okay, let's skip ahead again. All right, we got a problem. What's the problem? Um, ah, Avalon's location would be safe. Okay, the only problem I see with that is I don't know how to do it, so I'm not sure if I can. I'll teach you how to do it. We can work on it today, even. What makes you so confident I can learn? If you can do something as difficult as teleport with a passenger, you can set up a reverse cage. It's a basic technique, and on a purely fundamental level, I can assure you teleporting by folding space is a much more complex process. I have to admit that when you put it that way... Besides, you're already keeping a reverse cage around yourself on instinct. Otherwise, you'd be overloaded with constant input from your sphere of awareness. Okay, are we... not yet. Many espers, when they first awaken, either lack awareness of their psi and thus aren't conscious of their sphere, or else they unconsciously block it out. Like reducing the background noise on instinct. I'm quite certain you're doing the latter. What makes you so sure of that? If you were to decide to teleport to the ruins, what would be your first step? Expand my sphere far enough to see that location. There you go. You're not expanding your sphere. Your sphere is nothing more than the range of your awareness. It's always a given size. What you're doing is removing or diminishing the strength of the reverse cage that blocks it all out. Oh, I didn't realize that. Thank you, Lance, for explaining how that works. You just don't realize that's what you're doing. I'm assuming I'm not going to actively maintain this reverse cage, but sort of pre-program it to maintain itself? Yes. As you've learned before, you can set up rules for your side to follow without dedicating focus or stamina towards it. What I'll be teaching you is that you can also create a packet of psi energy that you sever from yourself. This energy can continue to maintain itself according to the program you give it ahead of time. For a while, anyway, depending on the strength and density of your psi. Like all energy fields, these sorts of things disperse over time. Okay, we... yeah, now we're back. For like, three seconds, okay. It would be best if I could take you to Avalon in person. It's always easier to do this sort of thing if you're present at the location. But on the off chance they're observing our movements with Psy, we'd have no way of knowing. We can't risk going there revealing the location. Not when we're trying so hard to keep it hidden. But it is possible to do it from here. If I base it on your previous teleporting range, Avalon is well within your sphere. It's tricky to do this sort of thing with only a psychic presence at the location, but I'm confident in your ability. I guess I'm glad someone is. Yeah, because it's not her this time. As I said, you're already doing it. But we want to teach you how it works so you can program a cage to remain even without your focus. Right. I'm ready. Uh, there we go. And we're doing good. Alright. I'll rest. A bit. Until the headache goes away. Lance looked like he wanted to say something to maybe protest, but he closed his mouth and went to get the tea instead. I knew the point he was trying to make, and he wasn't wrong, but we couldn't afford to take it easy. No, I couldn't, because a lot of this rested on me. After this, I wanted to get him to teach me a few other things. Alright, this is the complication question, probably no affection if I'm correct. Yep. No affection, just analyzing. Can't we just dismantle the mainframe and stop this cycle? I have also wondered about dismantling the mainframe. Many times. But it was built for a reason, and removing it isn't a simple thing. At first, each biodome or dome cluster controlled its own systems, but the world slowly moved towards unifying everything. When one dome suffered damage, it was difficult to shift power or supplies to them in a decentralized system. Electricity is difficult to store and move, and it was complicated by everyone having a distinct power grid. There were tensions and political discord when aid wasn't rendered, or those who managed the systems were slow to respond. 
and there were many other systems each dome had to maintain. City maintenance, life support, weather, water reclamation. Each dome spent a great deal of resources and labor to manage these systems. But by centralizing everything to a single mainframe that controlled all planetary systems, the domes could consolidate resources into a single massive team. If a dome or cluster had an emergency, dealing with it became much easier with the system. And, of course, later, to reduce the labor needed to manage the planet, I was created. To dismantle the mainframe means going back to the former way of doing things. Each nation or city-state would manage itself. This would inevitably drain resources and cause strife. But there's already strife because of the existence of the mainframe. Humans value independence in a way that is different from the Thalassans. And there are those who also seek to crush the independence of others for the sake of their power. I thought that self-management would address those issues, which is why I handed over control of most systems after the war and let everyone believe I'd gone offline. At the time, tensions were too high to address what would be needed for true decentralization. Humans were forced to work within the parameters I gave them, while the mainframe still automated some systems or locked humans out of others. For decentralization now, those in current control of the power grid on each side would have to relinquish control to allow for integration and power supply in a fair and balanced way. The same would be true for any system still managed in part, or in full, by the mainframe. This includes the defense grid as well. That cooperation is something I could not and cannot force on anyone. Not without holding the planet hostage until they comply. And I'm certain you can imagine where that would lead. Perhaps after the war would have been the best time for it, but I just wanted the fighting to stop. I think I made many unwise decisions back then. It was a situation I didn't know how to deal with. I'm confident I could have managed it better. So it's just moving from one type of complexity to another. Yes. But the current complexity with the mainframe and the AI involves you as an individual, whereas decentralizing would remove you from the equation. I guess it's not helpful to speculate about something that can't be done. It's not impossible. Very little is. Who knows what the future holds? It would be nice to be free of this. Though it's strange, I never considered it a shackle in the past. All right, are we? Yeah, now we're back. Well, that was a heavy discussion about the implications of decentralization. Um, what are we doing now? Okay, we did that last time. So now we're doing cautious. Just to be clear, what's their plan at this point? To apprehend me or to kill me? To apprehend you by any means necessary. I think if they wanted you dead, sending a team wouldn't be worth the trouble. At this point, the earliest time frame I've caught wind of puts their team in a seri no sooner than 40 hours. Still, that's rather fast. Why are they moving so fast? Are they afraid I'll flee and disappear again? Most likely. They're aware their bot was destroyed somehow, so they'll assume you'll be aware someone may be coming for you. I imagine their fear is losing you again, but there is a sense of desperation. There may be something else driving them, but it will require some digging to know for sure. So they want to get to Asteri and enter the Waste there, just like you said. How long would it take them to get here from there? I imagine it will depend on the range and stamina of their knights. Asteri isn't close. They'll be moving with a small team as well. But traveling via teleportation makes Virio's plan to orchestrate a chance encounter with Endgame's border patrols impossible. I would prefer to avoid a confrontation. I'm not sure that's possible either. We're not without the ability to defend ourselves, though. His words cut off, eyes going far away for a moment. His expression was puzzled, then a slight smile crossed his face. Kesa? Mm, yep, it's Kesa. 
think we can run away while they beat each other up and deal with Nyx? Not that I want your little brother to get beat up. Much. I mean, maybe a bit? This is kind of all his fault. Lance chuckled softly. <laughs> Kesa is a good person, but I can understand your frustration with him. I'm confident my father was the one behind everything, and Kesa was following his orders. And unfortunately, my father will never cross paths with Endgame. The entire family will make sure of that. Well, I suppose it's bad form to want your father to get beat up a little too. So I'll let it pass. In all seriousness, if Endgame moves, it will be before the others. Magnus will work out where they're heading and will be able to surmise you and I are together very fast. So if your brother makes a move, our window of opportunity shrinks. I will try to keep Magnus from watching what Kesa is doing. He's a clever man, but I can slow him down and shutter up his usual avenues for spying. Alright, music change. There we go. What's going on? Oh, okay. So she did contact Jack. I still can't believe it worked, though. At first, I thought Lance would catch me right away. I had mimicked his abilities before, but it wasn't something I practiced. I had to proceed based on improvising and guessing, and studying the private network he'd created for me and my mother to use. I had a feeling if he hadn't been so distracted with everything else, he'd have noticed right away, so that had worked in my favor. King or not, he was a mere mortal now, and sometimes us mortals miss things. That's the only reason my attempts to reach out had succeeded, though I had many moments where I thought it wouldn't. And they agreed to help, so that's what matters. Then stealing what little time I had to help them make it as close to us as possible without detection. Alright, showering... Oh, this is still new, apparently. Fifteen minutes when I was supposed to be showering really meant time that had not been spent sh showering. And every other minute I can spare, I could spare, was spent exhausting myself for people we could rely on for sincere help. They were on their way and would be standing by soon. Now the problem was how to tell Lance. Hmm? I wasn't even sure how to breach the subject. As always, the longer you hit things, the more difficult it was to come clean. There was no doubt in one way I was vastly overstepping, even violating boundaries. Something I'd never do under normal circumstances, which this was not. I couldn't ignore the lingering feeling the situation wouldn't be as easily resolved as Lance was hoping. I rubbed my face again and checked the trap system again. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. Fight time. So, I'm gonna make a save here because it wants me to do the same choice I did for the passionate end. But I'm really curious how it would go if we did the other one. There's only one bad ending, so I know I can't get a bad ending here. It shouldn't mess up the sweet ending, but I just want to save just in case. Half the traps I had taken more than a day to set up were gone in an instant. Stay here. Morgan, no! I just had to hold out for a few minutes, that was all. I flung a shield around Lance as I darted away from him. Jack! I hope you're close by because we need you now! Lance was saying something as I ran, but I didn't hear it. My mind was racing as I tried to come up with a way to alter the plan. Just to hold them long enough for Jack to arrive. Lance was probably like, Magnus, send in the troops! We were outnumbered, and Lance couldn't do anything too significant to their nanosystems if he didn't want to arouse suspicion, so I had to draw all their attention to me. From off to the side, I sensed the sharp blue sigh of the night disappear and relocate near Lance. I had no idea where I was going except a more central location. I was keeping a fragile shield around myself to ward off the bishop, but he wasn't the problem. It was Xavier who ran at me, giving me only a second to glimpse the orange sigh threaded through his arms as he slammed a fist into the shield, shattering it in an instant. I threw my hands up, desperately mimicking what he was doing with his sigh. His punch landed with enough force to throw me off balance, though it didn't hurt as much as I would have expected. Before I could react, he tackled me around the waist, throwing us both to the ground. I shoved him hard, driving an elbow into his face with far more force than would have been normal. He released his grip enough for me to scramble away, but seconds later he hit me from behind again. 
I let out a brief scream as we both toppled into the pool. Or would have. I teleported myself away as he ducked under the water with a heavy splash. Before I could catch my breath, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I threw up the shield and a side burst shuddered against it. I flung one right back as the bishop attacked, with one of the rooks with him. There's no way we can hold them off! Jack! Easy, butterfly. Good grief, Jack. There was the quiet whine of a weapon and a shot fired. Farrell went down. Thank God. Now for the others. But when I turned back, three new people were stepping out of a very familiar flash of light. Caleb? I like that that's the one that she reacts to. It's like, oh God, it's Caleb. <laughs> I recognized him and Ari at once, and they were with a woman I didn't know. They didn't hesitate to jump right in. Caleb went for Xavier, who was climbing out of the pool. But he vanished in a whirl of hot air as the knight abandoned Lance and tried to round up their teammates. He only grabbed the rooks and bishop before the four of them left. The two infantry, one of whom was still prone on the ground, were abandoned just like that. My legs felt like they might give out, but I whipped my head around, desperate to check Lance. He was leaning against the house, holding his torso. Ah, he got hurt this time, dang. The surrounding shield had broken at some point as well. I rushed to his side, shamed when I saw the blood on his lip. I'm sorry, I was curious what the other choice did, Lance. I'm sorry. Are you alright? Well, it's been a while, but I managed. Why did you run off like that? I wanted to draw their attention away from you. You could have been injured. I was trying to protect you and you still got hurt. You two want to tell us what the hell is going on here. And where the hell are the others? I know you've got more people lurking nearby. Thank God Jack and the others made it in time. But stayed hidden. Nyx has engaged the King's Guard with their additional team members. We may be required. Let's go. Take... these two. He tossed the unconscious infantry that had been left behind to the woman with him. Queen's Guard will meet up with the King's Guard. The three of them grouped together, and for a split second, Caleb looked my way. We'll be back to clean up this mess soon. And they were gone. Great. Uh, nope. For a long moment, there was nothing but the sound of dying wind left in their wake. Morgan, are you hurt anywhere? No. Maybe a little bruised up. It's nothing serious. I tipped his face up, checking the growing bruise at the corner of his mouth. It wasn't over yet, but we were alive and someone else was doing the fighting, so that was good. <clears throat> right, Crimson. So about that thing I wanted to tell you? Is this? Okay, now we're back. There we go. More or less? Ah, they didn't try to kidnap me. More or less. It's true, because now you know that they actually started this whole thing. Eh? There we go. Have I changed my mind? Nope. Of course not! I'm not going anywhere. That was the point of all this. But just what kind of deal did you make? One that didn't involve Crimson. Ari, Vaughn. Oh, come on. Are you even serious right now? Gotta keep beating people up. Part of me could understand Caleb's argument here. From their perspective, Kaysa and the others were just criminals, ones they'd clashed with before. It still made me angry. Mm. Ari sigh flashed blue, a sign he was about to teleport. Nope. Think again. I teleported to Kaysa's side in an instant, grabbing his arm to prepare to get him away from them if Ari made for him. Oh, interesting. So instead of disrupting Ari's side, you're like, I can play teleport tag with you all day. That's a new trick. Ari tipped his head to the side, staying in place instead of coming toward us. He's like, did you just mimic my ability? I concur. You've improved. I like that even on opposite sides, Ari's like, hey, you know, good job on that. Of necessity, mostly. You can't take him. We'll be kilometers away from here before you have the chance to get near him. 
I have no idea what deal Lance set up with Magnus, but it didn't involve turning any of these people over to you. I asked them here, so I'll take responsibility for it either way. Oh, come on. You have to know we can't ignore this. I wouldn't try it, Caleb. Morgan already said it before. We have two queen ranks on our side this time, and Veli doesn't like you. Looks to me like Veli is barely standing. Probably strained himself getting you here in time to get involved in that little confrontation. Try it, shithead. Yeah, get him, Veli! <laughs> Veli coming down with, like, the sick burns and insults. I love it. Everyone, please. Is this necessary? Of course it is. It's our damn job. Kesa came at my request to help us because we couldn't trust Endgame. And now that you have a deal with Lance to prevent you coming at me, you're just going to go after the next convenient target? Hey, that man you're protecting is a criminal, little queen. And someone who tried to drag you off Delphine a couple of months ago. Oh, weird. The only people I remember trying to drag me anywhere were with Endgame. Are you really defending one of the highest ranked people in the Delphine underworld right now? I'm defending someone who came here to help me. You don't have to worry about- We do have to worry about it. You know who this guy is. Who these people are. Caleb, this isn't what we came here for. We have no specific orders regarding Crimson. Perhaps we should retreat for now. If I may interrupt, you may not inter- Oh, hell. He muttered the words under his breath, looking extremely irritated. He's like, Magnus. It appears you have your specific orders now, yes? Cute. You've been talking to him the entire time. Well, you wanted orders. I procured them for you. Nice. All you damn kings are the same. Magnus, you. Probably you too, little Fianchetto. <laughs> Why does that have such strong, wicked Witch of the West energy? I'll get you, my pretty, and your little doggy, too. <laughs> but, you know what? I'm gonna take this as Caleb Salty, because so far, Rooks have kind of been near the bottom of my list, and the kings have been near the top. And so he's like, damn you, kings! He looked disgusted as he turned away. We're leaving for now. Vaughn and Ari both looked more relieved than not as the three of them grouped up again. And they were gone. We good? We got music change. Music change is always a nice thing to see, right? Okay. Let's wrap this up with a nice little bow, shall we? The first days after everything happened had been a little chaotic. Then things went quiet again. Lance was spending a lot of time in contact with Bracel. And Crimson. But there was also a bit of normalcy as well. Lance and I would stand outside together, leaning against one another, while I tried to dissect everything that had happened and what it meant going forward. It was a lot to take in. Hello. You two still out here? That sun is never budging, no matter how much you stare at it. Yes, Jack, we realize that. We don't have much more time before we have to go back, just so you know. Considering I'm your ride, I think you can wait. You've become cheekier since I last saw you. I've always been cheeky. The last time you saw me, I was just having a very bad day. I guess that's true. Glad to see you're having better days now. Is this where we're gathering now? <laughs> it wasn't meant to be a gathering, but I suppose it is one now. I was thinking we should head back to Delphine soon. I know Ulrich is tolerating my occasional presence here. But I don't want to provoke him by being too obvious. Okay, so in this version, we don't take Lance to go see his dad. Kesa and Jack have come for a visit. Magnus had already complained several times about my sneaking Kesa back and forth to visit Lance. Mm-hmm. And he started threatening to visit too! <laughs> I... Nothing would make me happier. <laughs> For... Whatever that would solve, I suppose. He just feels left out. Like, all the cool kings are here, and he's stuck in his tower. So he's like, 
I want to go outside. Yeah, it would be annoying if that bastard made good on his threats to come here himself. I never met Magnus, but I wasn't sure I wanted to. <sighs> I keep picking like the wrong options. For <laughs> I should have met Magnus in this one to be so she would be like, last time I saw him, he ruined my tangerines. A kind way to describe him would be eccentric. A less kind way would be to say he was obnoxious. And that was from a distance. I couldn't imagine how bad it was in person. I wouldn't mind a visit from him. We've been friends for a very long time. Though, I do understand your frustration with him, Jack. Yeah, well, I know he has his reasons, but I can't get behind what he stands for. With time, I hope to change what it is he stands for. His coercing you to get involved in their stupidity isn't helping. I agree. I'm still not pleased that you need to get involved with Endgame. Father is also unhappy about it. It's something I agreed to do because it was necessary. And because it was right. You could have just asked for our help. I can't believe it took Morgan to do that instead of you contacting your own brother. I was just... He held up a hand, cutting Lance off, a smile coming to his lips. I understand. Regretful as it was that Endgame got involved, I understand your hesitation. It would have been nice if you could have believed in us more. But Morgan helped me find a brother I thought was lost forever. For that, I can only be grateful. <laughs> He chuckled as he stared out towards the sun. Father was so angry you escaped us, Morgan. But the moment he learned Deimos was here, all was forgiven in an instant. If she hadn't got away from Jack, she never would have found you, Dame Lance. Aw, uh, you know what? I really like that we actually see Casey using uh, his brother's new name. That that's nice. So he's like, accepted and acknowledged that De he's not fully Deimos anymore, he's like this new person, and he's acknowledging that and using his, his new name. I like that. I like that a lot. Deimos is fine, you know. Case's smile softened. Uh, that's nice, too. He's like, eh, you can call me by my old name, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not a stickler for it. He keeps asking when you'll visit. Magnus has been very clear he isn't okay with that. Not that I'm opposed to breaking the rules, but it might still be early. I thought as much. Yeah, she's just not confident enough to be like, eh, F you, Magnus, I'm done, do what I want. <laughs> he tipped his head to the side and smirked. <laughs> you could always both come back with us. I'm sure Father would accept you with open arms. I have a feeling that would not go as smoothly as your father might hope. Probably not. Then we'll go back for today, and let you return so Magnus Ulrich doesn't make good on his irritating threats to come here himself. Alright. I'll take you to the usual spot. There will be a car waiting. Lance slid his arm, arms around me and gave me a quick kiss, even though I'd be gone only a few minutes. I'd been ferrying Kesa back and forth since that day two weeks ago. It was less effort for me than it was for his queen rank, the man named Veli. At first, it took four stops even with just one passenger. Now, with multiple people, I could make it in two. Kesa and Lance shared a hug before I finally took Jack and Kesa back to Delphine. Veli was waiting for us in the usual spot with a sleek black car. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. <laughs> I smirked at him, knowing he would want to visit again as soon as he could. Which was fair, he and Lance had a lot to catch up on. He caught my arm before I stepped away from them to leave. I know I have said it before, but I want to thank you again for... trusting me. Enough to reach out. Well, I trusted what Lance told me about you, which is that you're a good person. Even so, without you we would never have known he was alive. I'm just glad all his fears about reaching out to you were unfounded. To my great astonishment, Kesa pulled me into a tight hug. It kept surprising me how affectionate he was despite how cold he could seem at times. Oh yeah, he can be very affectionate. 
We'll never be able to repay this, Morgan. But you know if you ever need anything, you can always come to us. As the Fianchettos, not as Crimson. Though, Father would gladly put the full force of Crimson behind helping Deimos. My earlier comment about coming to Delphine was said in jest, but I know Magnus Ulrich is trying to coerce you into joining Endgame. Kesa, I appreciate you so much. You're still looking out for this girl, like, yo, if Magnus is a problem, you come hide out over here. We, we'll take care of you. If they ever attempt to pressure you. I know. I'm not sure I want to rile Crimson up for any reason, and most of the time I try to live in absolute denial that that's a thing. But I'll remember it. Good. I stepped away from them, waved, and returned home. I imagine I'll have to go soon. I don't know for how long. Should I come with you? If you want to see Bracil, yes. But I know you're still wary of Endgame. They won't do anything to you while I'm there, but I understand if you want to wait. Besides, you still have work to do. Yeah, Viria would be gutted if I left now. With the partial cave-in inside the temple, my abilities have been coming in pretty handy. I can't deprive them of a pretty handy assistant. He slipped his arms against me, warm lips finding the side of my neck. Though I'm certain Magnus will pester me about your response to his offer. Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. I understand. He's just impatient. Of course, it would be most convenient for them if the two of us happily moved to Bracel together. But I think he knows that's unlikely. Still, if you joined Endgame's research division... Hmm, research division... Unearthing a very cool tomb that's five minutes down the road. It's a hard choice. I know. He promised they might work out a way for me to stay here and study in the Wastes. And help protect Avalon. It would require a lot of travel back and forth, but Lance would be traveling anyway. I wasn't sure about it, though. It meant giving up freedom I'd come to enjoy. I twisted around in Lance's arms, draping my own over his shoulders. I'll support whatever decision you make. He leaned and pressed a soft kiss to my lips. A small laugh escaped, causing me to pull away and give him a questioning look. He just shook his head and leaned down, resting his forehead against mine. Just ever surprised by the twisting turns life can take when you are actively taking part in it and not merely watching. I'm so glad you came into my life, Morgan. And I cannot wait to see where tomorrow and the days after take us. Same. I tipped my head up, giving him a soft kiss. Definitely. Nice. Wonderful. You love to see it. That was great. I, I really liked that sweet ending, too. The, the journey there was sadder, more bittersweet, just because they weren't as close. They were more hesitant, more cautious about their relationship, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm sad like we didn't get to see the, the dad son reunion, but we saw that in the passionate ending. Magnus is being a butt, which is <laughs> par for the course, of course. Um, but yeah, that was a really solid, sweet ending, I thought. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me. And now we have a bad ending to go and see, so hopefully I will see you there for that. Until next time, I will see you later.